Hi, you are watching Pikai Pharmacy. So today in this video we are going to discuss the mechanism of action of antiviral drugs. Now you may know that a virus is alive only inside the host organism and during its life cycle it goes through several steps like attachment of the virus, then its entry, then the uncoating of virus, replication, synthesis of protein, assembly and release. Now if we can inhibit any of these steps then we can prevent the virus to cause infection. So in this video I will show you some examples of antiviral drugs and the way they inhibit these individual steps of viral life cycle. However, the examples of drug that you will see in each step of inhibition are not for same drug. So let us begin. So when a virus infects a host organism then it first attaches itself to the host cell surface. So the virus attaches itself to the host cell membrane with the help of some special proteins present on its surface. So the attachment is done by viral proteins present on capsid or envelope of the virus. These viral proteins bind with some specific receptor present on the host cell membrane. You can see I have drawn this host cell receptor with the help of this blue color. So these receptors bind with these viral proteins and causes the attachment of the virus. So in order to prevent this infection, we can inhibit this particular step that is the attachment of the virus to the host cell surface by the help of some inhibitors. So a common example is Enfevertide. Now after the attachment of the virus, the virus enters into the host cell cytoplasm. So this viral entry across the host cell membrane into the cytoplasm is mediated by some other viral proteins. Now as per as the inhibition process, antiviral drugs also inhibit this process in order to prevent the viral infection. So a common example is Maraviroc which is an entry inhibitor that specifically targets and blocks the chemokine co-receptor CCR5 which is used by the HIV for fusion and cell entry. Now as the virus entered into the host cell, it will undergo uncoating. So it uncoats itself to release the viral genome inside the host cell. So here in uncoating, the nucleocapsid undergoes some structural modification or degradation to release the viral genome into the host cell cytoplasm if it is RNA. If the genome is DNA, then it gets released inside the nucleus. Now there are also some inhibitors which inhibits this uncoating process. For example, drugs like amantadine and remantadine blocks the M2 proton channel in influenza A virus and prevents the pH dependent dissociation of the viral proteins. So that the viral RNA of this influenza A virus does not get released. Now we will discuss viral replication as it is a very crucial step for the virus in its life cycle. By undergoing replication the virus increases its genomic content. As per as the classification there are three main types of viruses that is DNA viruses, RNA viruses and retroviruses. However, in this video we will only discuss the inhibition of DNA and RNA viruses. Yeah, but we will definitely discuss about the retroviral drugs in some another video, so keep it just aside for now. So both the DNA and RNA viruses uses polymerase enzyme to replicate. The DNA viruses uses DNA polymerase enzyme and the RNA viruses uses RNA polymerase enzyme to replicate. Now if we can inhibit their polymerase enzyme, then we can prevent their replication. Now for DNA viruses, inhibition of DNA polymerase is done by nucleoside analogs. So nucleoside analogs are molecules that mimics the structure of actual nucleoside. For example, acyclovir is an analog of guanine. They are structurally almost same but acyclovir lacks the 3 prime hydroxyl group which is present on guanine. Now nucleoside analogs gets phosphorylated to from nucleotide 
but they lack the three prime OH group. Now this nucleoside analogs after getting phosphorylated attaches to the viral DNA and stops the replication because they lack the three prime OH group which is very essential for the attachment of further nucleotide during replication. In conclusion, nucleoside analogs mimics the structure of actual nucleoside and for which they get attached to the viral DNA and causes termination of viral replication. So examples of some nucleoside analogs are acyclovir, gangcyclovir and forcarnate. Now for RNA viruses, there are non-nucleoside polymerase inhibitors which directly inhibits the RNA polymerase activity. Now for example, favipiravir is a drug that inhibits the RNA polymerase. So this group of inhibitors not only inhibit the RNA polymerase activity but they are also successful to inhibit the DNA polymerase. Now after replication, the virus produces viral proteins through translation. We can also inhibit this step of viral life cycle to prevent the viral infections. In this step, the viral mRNA gets translated to form the viral proteins, which are required by the virus to form the protein envelope and capsid. So example of inhibitors that inhibits this translation of viral mRNA is alpha interferon. Alpha interferon is a glycoprotein obtained from human leukocyte and it inhibits the viral protein synthesis and promotes the breakdown of viral RNA. Alpha interferon is used for the treatment of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. After the production of viral proteins, the virus assembles itself and becomes infectious. So this step involves proteolytic cleavage of one or more capsid related proteins or cleavage of envelope related proteins by the help of protease enzymes. The protease enzymes can be of the host cell or may belong to the virus itself. Now inhibitors inhibit the proteases in order to prevent the viral assembly. Example of such inhibitor is Boseprevid. Now comes the final step of viral infection that is a release of virus to the outside of the host cell. So there are neuraminidase inhibitors that inhibits the viral budding and prevents it to release in the bloodstream. Example of such inhibitor is oseltamivir which is used in a treatment of influenza A and influenza B. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Bye.